Uh, as a member of the Budgetary Oversight Committee, I'm delighted to strongly endorse this important report, uh, which was launched, of course, on May 30th this year. Gender budgeting and equality budgeting have been major priorities for our work, and I was disappointed, of course, that Minister Dunn, who didn't present uh, a gender budgeting report alongside Budget 2019 on, on October 9th last, as recommended, of course, in the report before us. I'd like to thank the Clerk of the Budgetary Oversight Committee, Mr Ronan Murphy, our Policy Advisor and Economist, Ms Catherine McCarthy, and our Administrative Officer, Ms Miriam Plunkett, for all their work in bringing this important report before us. Thanks are also due to Director Ms Annette Conley and her staff on the Parliamentary Budget Office, and finally, of course, thanks to the Coherlock uh, of the Budgetary Oversight Committee, Deputy Colin Brophy, and to all of our colleagues here on the committee. We are delighted, of course, to have such a range of distinguished stakeholders present to the Committee on Gender and Equality Budgeting, and we, meet with the uh, we met with the National Women's Council of Ireland, the Financial Scrutiny Unit of the Scottish Parliament, the Irish Wheelchair Association and the Disability Federation of Ireland, the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission, um, with representation, of course, also from the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform, and, of course, the uh, Public Parliamentary Budget Office. The committee's Policy Advisor, Ms Catherine McCarthy, also travelled to Germany to attend a conference by the European Institute for Gender Gender Equality on Gender Budgeting, and we also examined experiences of the Basque Country and, and Austria. Um, here, look, Senator Alice Mary Higgins also played an important role in initiating the work which led to this report, and I, I recall, of course, a very early meeting uh, Senator Higgins organised with the Scottish Parliamentary colleagues at which Deputy Boyd Barrett uh, and I, I think, also attended. Uh, Diane Elson, in her paper, Strengthening Economic and Financial Governance Through Gender Budgeting in, tw in 2001, defined gender budgeting as trying to analyse and I quote, analyse any form of public expenditure or method of raising public money from a gender perspective, uh, identify the implications and impacts for women and girls as compared to men and boys, um, end quote. But Ms Elson also noted that the practical steps needed to gender-proof budgets include assessing what impact does any fiscal measure have on gender equality. For example, does it reduce, increase or leave gender equality uh, unchanged? Austria is one of just three countries worldwide which have enshrined the concept of gender budgeting into the constitution and the nation states and communities and communes of Austria, of course, have to assess each chapter of the budget on a gender equality outcome basis. Of course, the Austrian Budget Committee carries out ex ante scrutiny of gender outcomes on each proposed budget, and their Court of Audit, which is like our, our Public Counts Committee, does the ex post assessment. As we learned at the meeting organised by um, Senator Higgins and subsequently from the Scottish Financial Scrutiny Un Unit, Scotland's budget since 2009 is accompanied by an equality budget statement, and the Scottish Government is working on a gender index for Scotland. In 2014, the Scottish Government also also commissioned the SAW review, which sets out an action plan to address the inequalities facing uh, women in Scotland. In our report, of course, on gender budgeting, the committee notes the initiative of the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform in rolling out the pilot programme to progress equality budgeting in this country. The programme, of course, involves six departments, transport, tourism and sport, culture, her heritage and the Gaeltacht, children and youth affairs, education and skills, health and then business, enterprise and innovation. Gender equality objectives and indicators in those departments have also been published in the revised estimate its volume uh, 2018. Um, the committee report notes that the launch of the pilot programme, but many constituents feel that the programme could have been much more far-reaching um, and ambitious to speed up the attainment of full gender equality in national budgets and indeed in the workforce. The Budgetary Oversight Committee rightly draws attention to lacunae and gaps in the pilot which were researched and highlighted to us by both the National Women's Council of Ireland and the Parliamentary Budget Office. Our report emphasises that metrics in the programme were not clearly linked to expenditure, the key point to her look, which you need if you're launching this kind of programme, and the key high-level metrics for large financial allocations are not linked uh, to the activities and expenditure of, the, of each department in question. Clearly, as the report concludes, the formatting and presentation of pilot metrics and targets could be significantly improved. It's deplorable that a key recommendation of the National Women's Council, um, the publication of an equality budget statement to sit alongside the budget statement itself, and the reading of such a statement by the Minister wasn't accepted or acted upon by Minister Pascal Dunhu in Budget 2019. Um, I believe we should also adopt the recommendation of the National Women's Council that gender budgeting be placed on a statutory basis and perhaps uh, indeed underpinned by constitutional amendment. The analysis in our committee report reflects on the challenges and difficulties presented by a gender budgeting process, in particular the collection of sex uh, disaggregated data as begun for example by Israel in 2008 is critical to the successful rollout of gender budgeting for the future. Uh, the Department of, of uh, um, Public Expenditure and Reforms request to departments involved in the pilot programme to identify identify and log where data deficiency exists is an important first step, but the committee report rightly asks for much more to be done in this regard. When Minister Dunne, who engaged with the committee, I also asked him if the Department of Finance and Deeper um, would utilise the ESRI switch model to invigilate the gender impact of budget 
budgetary measures and budget 2019. But as you know, Cahir, look, regrettably, uh, Deputy Dunhu said that it was impossible to do this in budget 2019. However, I commend the initiative of the uh, Parliamentary Budget Office in commissioning the ESROI to examine the expansion of the capacity of the switch, switch model to include effective scrutiny of the gender impact of budgetary measures in Ireland. I note that ESROI informed the committee that a pilot project ESROI carried out for the Equality Authority uh, and Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission in 2014 looked at the gender impact of tax and benefit changes and showed how the switch model could be extended to provide a gender impact assessment. ESROI, of course, reported that working age lone parents who are predominantly female are significantly more exposed to changes in tax policy and benefits than any other cohort. Uh, Dr Claire Keane and uh, Barra Rowntree of ESRA, of course, presented to the Budget Oversight Committee last month and gave us a valuable insight into the work of ESRA's tax benefit switch model and showed how gender-based divisions of work and caring roles result in a difference in incomes and benefits uh, received and how differences in work and PRSI contributions histories also deeply affect welfare payment rates and whether an individual even qualifies for a benefit in the first place. Um, the committee report also highlights the Scottish Government's Equality and Budgetary Advisory Group and the Austrian System of Performance bu Budgeting, which allows priorities such as gender equality uh, budgeting to be included. Briefing paper number four of the PBO on the gender and quote on the gender and equality uh, budgeting pilot and the revised estimate for public service 2018 has also been of great assistance Coherlock, uh, to the Budgetary Oversight Committee. The Parliamentary Budget Office report uh, clearly shows, shows that just over 1.8 million in total, only, only 1.8 million, was spent on the six departmental programmes and that there's scope for building upon and enhancing the metrics and indicators employed uh, in the pilot. The PBO is also right to stress that gender budgeting should address specific and identifiable goals and a further development of the pilot, of course, is absolutely necessary. Massive development of it, uh, uh, The PBO also stressed that uh, high-level uh, metrics provided within the pilots are not clearly linked to specific allocations at subhead level and the pilot goal metrics and indicators are difficult to distinguish from pre-existing programme metrics. And if you look at the programmes, you, you can see that that's the case. Of course, the pilot programme does include laudable aims, including increasing the number of female apprentices, increasing female participation at all levels of sport, achieving gender balance in research teams, scientific research, improved participation by women in the film industry and the media, and much more affordable childcare. But the critique of the PBO and our committee report clearly shows how much more rigorous analysis is needed for much more ambitious gender equality programmes in all departments. Uh, the Budgetary Oversight Committee report itself quotes from the IMF that the fund has recognised in recent years that one cannot separate the issues of economic growth and stability on the one hand and equality on the other. The report also correctly quotes a study of the European Institute for Gender Equality which found in 2017 that greater gender equality across the EU could potentially result in 10.5 million additional jobs by 2020, by 2050, sorry, an increase of GDP per capita by nearly 10% by 2050 and be a major economic instrument to address some of the demographic challenges facing Europe. The OECD Deputy Secretary General Ms. Mary uh, Kivin Iemi also quoted an OECD estimate uh, that a 50% reduction in the gender gap in labour market participation would lead to a 6% increase in GDP by 2030. Or to put it all much more simply, um, uh, Cahir, like in the words of the famous song sung by, uh, sung by Bobby McGee called Bread and Roses, and I quote, the rising of the women means the rising of the race. So with the caveats I've mentioned above, uh, I'm delighted, I, I'm sure you know that song, uh, Cahir, look. Uh, you probably, you probably sung it many times as you marched along, as you went marching, marching, and demonstrated. Yeah. So, with those caveats, I'm delighted to support the recommendation of the Budget Oversight Committee and to again, again thank all those, including all of my colleagues here with us, who were involved in this production and who advised us so well. The benefits of gender budgeting are a sine qua non, uh, Cahirlock, for a highly productive, happy, and egalitarian society. Thanks, Cahirlock.